Moscow is under lockdown as there are growing concerns about a military takeover as Avegny Prigozhin and his feared 25,000-strong Wagner militia seize control of Rostov-on-Don in southern Russia. They declare that they are ready to die and swear vengeance for a military attack by Putin's forces that they claim killed some of their men. In the Russian capital, no public activities have been scheduled as Vladimir Putin gets ready to go on television to reaffirm his precarious hold on power. At around 7.30 am Saturday Moscow time, Prigozhin sent a fresh message claiming that his troops had entered Rostov-on-Don's Southern Defense Command and had taken control of the city's airfield. Government representatives had ordered the residents to stay inside, but several were seen outside watching what was occurring and even live-streaming it on their mobile devices. Early on Saturday morning, Steve Fish, a political science professor at the University of California, Berkeley, told the BBC World Service that this has the appearance of a military coup. The highest senior commander at the command post had evacuated as soon as he knew that Wagner forces were arriving, according to Prigozhin, who was formerly a friend of Vladimir Putin before waging war on Moscow's military leadership. We brought it under control so that attack aircraft would target the Ukrainians rather than us. The primary control center's headquarters are functioning regularly. There are no issues, and no officers removed anything. So it's incorrect when they claim that the Wagner PMC intervened and something went wrong up front, Prigozhin added. Now, according to reports, Sergei Sabianin, the mayor of Moscow, has cancelled all public activities. When we arrived here, we once more established that a significant amount of land had been lost. Three to four times as many soldiers were killed than were reported to superiors. And what is reported is ten times less than what is presented on television. Losses per day might reach up to 1,000 individuals on some days. The so-called refuseniks, who refuse not out of fear but rather because they have no way out, no weapons, and no control, are among the dead, missing, and injured. When he realized that we were getting close to the building, the chief of the general staff immediately left this area, he said. On Saturday morning, Wagner warriors were seen in new images wandering around Rostov-on-Don streets. In one shot, a member was seen flashing the victory sign V. Social media videos showed soldiers in front of the southern military headquarters, which is important for controlling the Ukraine conflict, and others could be seen less than half a mile away around the Interior Ministry's Rostov headquarters. According to Rob Lee, a senior scholar at the Foreign Policy Research Institute in Philadelphia who specializes in Russian defense, there are soldiers inside the structure, and Rostov is home to up to 300 Wagner fighters. They are not Russian National Guard soldiers. According to Ukraine specialist and former National Security Council member Alex and Vindman, that appears to be Wagner forces entering SMD headquarters. However, some said that it was unclear if the soldiers on the streets were Wagner and instead may have been Kremlin aligned forces. The spokeswoman for Vladimir Putin stated that necessary measures are being taken after the Russian president was notified of Prigozhin's allegations of a march on Moscow. Putin hasn't been seen in public or made any statements on the revolt. 
A Russian military helicopter that started fire on a civilian column was said to have been shot down by Prigogin in the city, which serves as the Kremlin's operational headquarters for the conflict in Ukraine. But his allegation wasn't supported by any evidence. Prigogin began his unusual move after demanding the resignation of Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu and threatening to hold Russian military officials accountable for the deaths of hundreds of his mercenaries during an airstrike. The head of the private army further said that the Russian military is deceiving Putin and concealing the remains of an additional 2,000 soldiers in order to hide losses in Ukraine. On Friday night, 1,000 miles from Moscow, as his Wagner soldiers drew near Ostav, Prigogin said they would take all necessary steps to overthrow the nation's military leadership. We will destroy anyone who stands in our way, he said. We are making progress and will persevere until the very end. In response, Moscow's streets were filled with Russian military vehicles. Prigogin was accused of instigating an armed revolt by the FSB security services, who earlier announced that they had launched a criminal investigation into him and demanded his arrest. The incident looks to be the worst domestic military crisis Putin has seen since he gave the order to launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of last year, but the circumstances on the ground are still unclear. Putin faces a serious challenge, according to retired CIA. Officer and former Pentagon official Mick Mulroy, from Prigogin. The Russian military may have to switch its priorities from stopping the Ukrainian advance to the Russian government's self-preservation if Mr. Prigozhin's warnings come true, he said. Even if this coup attempt fails, it clearly shows that those who were closest to the conflict are aware that it was a grave error. As Prigogin said that his troops were prepared to go all the way against Russian military commanders, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov was cited by the state news agency as stating that all of the nation's security services were constantly reporting to Putin. According to a source at a security service, security was increased on Friday night at government buildings, transit hubs and other important areas in Moscow. The Defence Ministry said in a statement that Prigozhin's charges were not true and are an informational provocation, as the stalemate between the two parties look to be reaching a climax. The armed insurrection by the Wagner commander was covered extensively on the main page of the Russian state-run media in the meanwhile, and Google News was apparently banned throughout the nation as the dispute heated up. According to Prigozhin, his actions do not constitute a military takeover. But in a flurry of audio communications that could not be independently confirmed, and in which his voice occasionally shifted, he seemed to imply that his 25,000-person militia was on its way to Moscow to overthrow the Defence Ministry's top brass. The lives of many tens of thousands of Russian troops were devastated, according to Prigozhin, who declared that those responsible will face punishment. I kindly request that no one show opposition. He declared, there are 25,000 of us, and we are going to figure out why chaos is happening in the country, pledging to defeat any air forces or roadblocks in Wagner's path. He said, we will quickly destroy anyone who attempts to resist a threat. In his increasingly bitter dispute with the ministry earlier on Friday, Prigogine appeared to cross a new boundary when he claimed that the Kremlin's justification for invading Ukraine was based on fabrications created by the army's senior brass. Prigogine has been openly criticizing Russia's top general, 
Valerie Jirossi Marv, and Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu of gross ineptitude and depriving Wagner of ammunition and supplies for months. The FSB Domestic Security Service announced it had initiated a criminal prosecution against him for advocating for an armed rebellion, a felony punishable by a jail term of up to 20 years, as his violent language appeared to escalate towards action. Prigozhin's words are actually appeals for the outbreak of an armed civil war on Russian soil, and his acts constitute a stab in the back of Russian service members against pro-fascist Ukrainian troops, the FSB claimed. We implore thee to avoid making grave errors, to cease using force against the Russian people, to stop carrying out Prigozhin's illegal and treacherous directives, and to take steps to imprison him. Putin has been notified. According to the Kremlin, and necessary measures are being taken. The entire scope of the problem in Russia is yet unknown because of contradictory statements made by the Wagner PMC and the Russian military leadership. In a video appeal, Lieutenant General of the Army Vladimir Alexeyev pleaded with Prigozhin to change his mind. You are trying to encroach on the president's authority, he replied, because only the president has the right to appoint the top leadership of the armed forces. In a different video, Wagner was admonished to start by General Sergei Surovikin, the deputy commander of Russian forces in Ukraine whom Prigozhin had complimented in the past. The enemy is only waiting for our domestic political climate to get worse, according to Surovikin. You must surrender to the will and order of the Russian Federation's People's President before it is too late. It must be done. He said, stop the columns and bring them back to their permanent bases. Former Putin friend Prigogine has been engaged in a nasty spat with Moscow in recent months. Wagner oversaw Russia's conquest of the Ukrainian city of Bokhmut last month, marking the country's largest win in 10 months. Up to this point, Prigogine has exploited this military triumph to openly criticize the Defense Ministry's leadership. Until recently, the Defence Ministry has mostly disregarded his criticism, at least in public. Unverified footage that was uploaded to a Wagner-related telegram channel depicted the alleged aftermath of an airstrike against Wagner soldiers. It displayed a woodland with little fires blazing and trees that seemed like they had been violently smashed. One body appeared, but there was no other obvious sign of an attack. A missile attack was launched on the camps of PMC private military company Wagner, said the caption. Several casualties. Eyewitnesses claim that the attack was carried out by the Russian Ministry of Defense's military, and that it came from behind. On Friday, he rejected Putin's main rationale for invading Ukraine on February 2024 last year for the first time. The war was essential. So Shoigu may advance to martial status. Prigozhin stated in a videotape that he did it so that he could get a second hero of Russia medal. The war was not necessary to denazify or demilitarize Ukraine. When Russia attacked Ukraine, Marit Gabadulin, a former Wagner leader who had relocated to France, warned Reuters that Wagner's men were likely to support Prigozhin. We have denigrated the army for a very long time. He is their leader, thus it makes sense that they would back him. If anybody gets in their path, they won't hesitate to fight the army. On the front lines of Ukraine, 
The Kremlin believed that Kiev was preparing an offensive close to the Bakhmut hotspot by taking advantage of rivalries between the Wagner mercenary organization and the Russian military. The Kiev government is gathering forces close to the Bakhmut front in an effort to take advantage of Yevgeny Prigozhin's provocation to destabilize the situation. For aggressive activities, according to a statement from the Russian Defense Ministry that was distributed by news organizations. After months of Wagner PMC supporting the Russian effort in Ukraine, Prigozhin, 62, has intensified his vocal attacks on President Vladimir Putin in recent weeks, including questioning the need of the terrible conflict there. Now that Prigozhin has said that the Council of Commanders of PMC Wagner has made a decision that the evil that the military leadership of the country brings must be stopped, tensions between Moscow and the private military firm are significantly rising. On Friday, the dreaded Wagner commander unleashed a vicious assault on Russia's military leadership, alleging that Putin is being misled by mentally sicker asterisk asterisk holes in high command over colossal tactical defeats in Ukraine. The Wagner leader's rage reached a boiling point on Friday when he posted a video showing what he said was the destruction caused by Russian bombers on the mercenary group's bases, despite the fact that they had fought with Putin in the conflict. After criticizing during his profanity-filled outburst directed at the country's top military command, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, on Telegram, he alleged that Russia bombed its own mercenary troops. Prigozhin said that Shoigu personally directed the strike on Wagner at the Russian military headquarters in the southern city of Rostov-on-Don before cowardly escaping. He made a reference to Shoigu and remarked, This vermin will be stopped. He yelled at the army not to oppose Wagner's efforts to restore justice, saying that the evil embodied by the country's military leadership must be stopped. In the video, Prigozhin says, We were ready to make concessions to the defense ministry, surrender our weapon. Today, after determining that we were still standing, they launched missile attacks against our back camps. In a series of enraged audio recordings made public by his spokesman, he lamented the deaths of a large number of his warriors and allies. According to Prigozhin, his actions did not constitute a military takeover. The armed mutiny call for action is the subject of a criminal investigation by Russia's FSB security services. In a statement reported by Russian news outlets, the National Anti-Terror Committee said, We demand that illegal actions be immediately halted. In connection with these statements, Russia's FSB has opened a criminal case into calls to stage an armed mutiny. Prigozhin urged the Russian people to join him, saying, There are 25,000 of us, and forbade them from opposing his men. General Sergei Surovikin, the deputy commander of Russia's war in Ukraine, ordered the members of the Wagner private militia to end their defiance of the military hierarchy and return to their barracks on Friday. The FSB security service had already said that Prigozhin's statements pledging to exact revenge on Moscow for allegedly murdering thousands of his soldiers amounted to a call to ignite an armed civil war, according to the Interfax news agency. It exhorted Wagner combatants to seize him. The Russian Defense Ministry refuted the allegations that the strikes had taken place, claiming that the assertions do not correspond to reality and that they were a provocation. 
The ministry also stated that the Russian armed forces continue to conduct combat operations in Ukraine. Ukraine warned the Kremlin in a tweet on Saturday night that we are watching, appearing to make light of the situation Putin is currently in. In the course of Kyiv's counter-offensive, according to Prigozhin, Moscow's soldiers were withdrawing in the east and south of Ukraine. That directly refuted Putin's claims that Ukraine was losing catastrophic numbers of soldiers and that the fighting had ceased. Prigozhin declared, We are washing ourselves in blood. Nobody is carrying backup supplies. The Dockers' deceit, they tell us, he said, alluding to the political and military authorities in Russia. Prigozhin has just acknowledged controlling the elusive mercenary squad and even meddling in US elections after years of operating covertly. In the longest and most likely deadly combat of the conflict, his forces supported by tens of thousands of prisoner recruits were crucial to Russia's seizure of the town of Bokhmut in the Donetsk area. But last week he charged Moscow's senior brass of misleading Russians about the Ukrainian offensive. What led to the start of the special military operation? He claimed that the conflict was necessary for a group of buffoons to promote themselves. Rarely has a controversial individual gained such prominence so quickly in Russian politics under Putin. Prigozhin advanced from a humble background to join Putin's closest circle. After being found guilty of fraud and theft during the closing years of the USSR, he served nine years in jail. He started a mediocrely successful hot dog company during the upheaval of the 1990s. From there, he entered the restaurant industry and founded a high-end restaurant in St. Petersburg that served Putin before switching from his position in the KGB to local politics. Prigozhin, however, has recently gotten involved in a contentious power battle with the Defense Ministry. He has charged Moscow's monstrous bureaucracy with hindering military advancements and accused Moscow's armed services of trying to steal wins in Ukraine from his soldiers. Wagner has reportedly been present in war areas including Syria, Libya, Mali, and the Central African Republic, where it is alleged to have committed atrocities and usurped government authority.